I just remembered I need to go to the commissary after work. Yeah, I need some groceries too. Welcome to class, soldier. Let's get started. Well, this is your third lecture. I know you're all getting a bit tired, but stick with me. Losing a soldier to shock is just as common or more so than losing a soldier to bleeding or other injuries. Last year I was out on the training field and saw someone who wasn't paying attention in this class giving a soldier with heat stroke ice cold water. He meant well, but he almost killed him. Today, we'll learn a little bit more about why that happened and why shock can be such a serious problem. Shock may be caused by severe injury or blood loss and disrupts the normal flow of blood through the body, leading to a collapse of body functions. If shock is not treated promptly and properly, death may result. Shock can be caused by severe or minor trauma to the body. Shock usually results from a loss of blood, heart failure, a blow, burns, severe infection, allergic reaction to drugs or food, insect bites, snake bites, or dehydration. Shock stuns and weakens the body. When the control of blood flow through the body is upset, death can result. Early identification and proper treatment may save the casualty's life. During this lesson, you'll become acquainted with the signs and symptoms of shock, and you will be required to perform the four steps for the prevention of shock. Only after you have performed the life-saving measures taught in the previous lessons do you take measures for the prevention of shock. The signs and symptoms of shock include sweaty but cool skin, which you may have heard called clammy skin, paleness of skin, where the casualty skin often appears to lack normal color and is streaked or spotted, restlessness or nervousness. If the casualty is standing, they may be pacing or walking about aimlessly. If the casualty is sitting, they may be swaying to and fro, or back and forth. Thirst. Severe bleeding. Confusion. In the confused state, the casualty may find themselves lost in their immediate surroundings, and may have difficulty with familiar places or things. You may see rapid breathing. Breathing rate may become short and rapid. You may see blotchy or bluish skin, especially around the mouth. Vomiting. And finally, nausea. This can be determined only by questioning the casualty and is usually described by them as having a queasy stomach or having the need to vomit. To treat shock, lay the casualty on their back. Using anything available, elevate the casualty's feet until they are higher than the heart. But be very careful. Some casualties who are in shock after a heart attack or those with lung problems breathe easier in a sitting position. If this is the case, allow the casualty to sit upright. Do not elevate suspected fractures that are not splinted. Also, do not elevate the legs if casualty has abdominal wounds. Make sure to loosen any restrictive clothing from around the neck, waist, or other areas where it might be binding. Next, loosen the casualty's clothing. The purpose of loosening all binding clothing is to maintain blood flow and to ease breathing, therefore reducing the possibility of a deeper state of shock. Make sure to prevent chilling and overheating. To prevent chilling, cover the soldier with any material available to keep them from losing their body heat. Place the cover under as well as over the casualty to prevent chilling in cold weather. Any readily available materials may be used such as a poncho, dry leaves, a blanket, pine needles, or other improvised forms of covering. In hot weather, the soldier must be kept from overheating, or a deeper state of shock may result. Any actual or improvised shelter can be utilized in hot weather, such as a makeshift lean-to, a shade tree, a building, or any improvised shade which shades the soldier from the direct sunlight. Caution! Do not give the casualty any food or drink. This may deepen the soldier's state of shock. When taking preventative measures for shock, display self-confidence and reassure the soldier that you can help. Do this by making calm, positive, and reassuring statements to the soldier. 
Make them feel as though there is no doubt in your mind that you know what you are doing and that you will do your best for them. Above all, at no time discuss the extent or severity of the soldier's injury with them or with another person within hearing distance of the soldier in shock. Be sure to notify medical personnel as soon as possible. Remember, it's preferable never to leave the casualty. However, if you have to leave the casualty, turn their head to the side to prevent choking should they vomit. Last but not least, Seek medical aid as soon as possible. You must accurately evaluate the casualty to determine the first aid measures needed to prevent further injury or death. Many times, caught up in the moment, you'll forget a crucial step. Therefore, when the situation permits, you should seek medical aid as soon as possible. But you must not interrupt treatment. To interrupt treatment may cause more harm than good to the casualty. If possible, send a second person to find medical aid. But again, Find medical aid as soon as possible. You're about to begin your third and final test. If you pass, you'll be qualified to be a combat medic. Go ahead and get started. See me when you're finished. Good job, soldier.